What's up guys, this is Massey, welcome to my channel. In this video I want to talk about buffer solution. So in the beginning I will talk about buffers and buffer solution and then you will learn buffering capacity and also you will learn how to calculate the pH of a buffered solution and you will see some examples regarding preparing buffer solution. So what is a buffered solution? The most important application of acid-based solutions containing a common ion is for buffering. A buffered solution is one that resists a change in its pH when either hydroxide ions or protons are added. The most important practical example of a buffered solution is our blood. A buffered solution mean containing a weak acid and its salt, for example HF and NAF, or a weak base and its salt, for example ammonia and ammonium chloride. Let's see an example. We need to find out the pH of a buffered solution. A buffered solution contains 0.5 molar acidic acid with Ka 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 and 0.5 molar sodium acetate. Calculate the pH of this solution. So let's find out the major species in this solution. So we have acetic acid, sodium ion, acetate, and water molecule. So acetic acid is a weak acid, sodium is not acidic and is also not basic. Why? Because as we had it earlier, it's a conjugate acid of a strong base so it doesn't have any affinity to react with hydroxide so it doesn't affect the pH at all on the other hand we have acetate acetate is the conjugate base of a weak acid so it, is, it has some affinity to react with proton to forms to form the acetic acid and we have also water molecule, which is a very weak acid or base and has some amphotric property. So when we write the equation for acetic acid that produces proton and acetate, so Ka 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 as it given, we can write it as the concentration of proton and concentration of acetate ion divided by concentration of acetic acid in equilibrium. So we just have a table, ice table, initial concentration A will be 0.5 coming from the initial concentration of acid and then we have 0.5 coming from the acetate. Why? Because here it says 0.5 molar sodium acetate, NaC2H3O2. So these are going to be the initial concentration and the initial concentration of proton is going to be approximately zero coming from water. And in equilibrium concentration, we have for acetic acid, we have 0.5 minus x. For acetate, we have 0.5 plus x, and proton is x. So we just sub it in the equation. Ka equals to 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 will be equal to x times 0.5 plus x divided by 0.5 minus x. And here we have 100 rule. What does that mean? It means that the concentration of acid is 0.5, initial concentration is 0.5, and the Ka value is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. So the concentration of acid is at least 100 times bigger than Ka, so it means that the dissociation is going to be very, very limited. So x is going to be very, very small comparing to 0.5. So 0.5 plus x will be approximately equals to 0.5. Also 0.5 minus x will be equal to or approximately equal to 0.5. So the reaction reduced to x times 0.5 divided by 0.5 and then 0.5 and 0.5 cancel out from the numerator and denominator. So it will be just x and x will be equal to 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. So the proton concentration is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Then we can find the pH which is 4.74. Now let's see another example. We want to find out the pH changes in buffered solution. Calculate the change in pH that occurs when 0.01 mole solid NaOH is added to one liter of the buffered solution 
described in previous example. Compare this pH change with that which occurs when 0.01 mole solid NaOH is added to 1 liter of water. So we have two different cases. First case is going to be when we have 0.01 mole solid sodium hydroxide added to 1 liter of the buffered solution, which is described in the previous example. So since the added solid sodium hydroxide will completely dissociate, why it's completely dissociated? Because we have a strong base. So since it's a strong base, it will completely dissociate into sodium ion and hydroxide ion. So the major species in this solution before any reaction will be acetic acid, sodium ion, acetate ion, hydroxide ion, and water. So we have sodium ion and hydroxide. Why? Because we have a strong base. Note that this solution contains a relatively large amount of a very strong base hydroxide ion, which has a great affinity for proton. The best source of proton is the acetic acid. And the reaction that will occur is OH minus or hydroxide plus acetic acid, which will produce water molecule and acetate ion so that's going to be the psychometric problem for the reaction below is going to be we have before reaction and after reaction we will have all the number of moles so we have one liter times 0.5 will be 0.5 moles hydroxide we have 0.01 mole this 0.01 is coming from the sodium hydroxide concentration and then in the product side, we have acetate, which is 1 times 0.5, which is going to be 0.5 moles. And this one is coming from sodium acetate. So acetic acid will react with hydroxide. So on one side, we have 0.5. The other side, we have 0.01. So after reaction, we will have 0.5 minus 0.01, which will be 0.49. And over there, we have 0. And in the product side, we have 0.51 mole. So note that 0.01 mole acetic acid has been converted to 0.01 mole acetate by added hydroxide. Which means that this 0.01, it was acid and it becomes like acetate. So that's why we have 0.5 plus 0.01 in the product side. So we will have 0.51 moles. Now, let's go through the equilibrium problem after reaction between hydroxide and acid is complete. The major species in solution will be acid, sodium ion, acetate, and water. And then acid will produce proton and acetate, which will be 0.49 for the acid, 0 for proton, and acetate will be 0.51. So we have negative x for the reactant side, positive x and positive x for the product side. Then we have for the equilibrium, we will have 0.49 minus x. Here we have x and here 0.51 plus x. We just sub it in in the equilibrium reaction. Ka equals to x times 0.51 plus x divided by 0.49 minus x. So X and X cancel out because the initial concentration of acid is much greater than Ka. And then we can find out the value of X, which is going to be the same concentration as proton, which will be 1.7 times 10 to the power of negative 5. And the pH is 4.76. So by adding sodium hydroxide, as you see here, the pH has changed from 4.74 to 4.76 which is very small number now in the second part of the question it ask let's go back and check it it asks compare this pH change with that which occurs when 0.01 mole solid NaOH is added to one liter of water so it means that there is no buffered solution so we add just sodium hydroxide 0.01 mole of sodium hydroxide in one liter of water. So let's see what happens to pH. Now, 
compare this with what happens when 0.01 mole solid NaOH is added to one liter. So it will be proton concentration will be Kw divided by hydroxide and the concentration of hydroxide will be 0.01 because we divided the number of moles by liter which is the volume it will be 1 times 10 to the power of negative 2 so the proton concentration will be 1 times 10 to the power of negative 12 and pH will be 12 so pH change will be 12 minus 7 which will be 5 so as you see here, since we don't have buffered solution, with the same amount of sodium hydroxide, we have pH change by 5. In the previous example, it was just 0.02. Let's have another example. We want to find out again the pH of a buffered solution. Calculate the pH of a solution containing 0.75 molar lactic acid with this Ka and 0.25 molar sodium lactate and lactic acid is a common constituent of biological system for example it is found in milk and it is present in human muscle tissue during exertion so the major species in this solution is lactic acid sodium lactate ion and water molecule again since sodium ion has no acidic or basic properties and water is a weak acid or base ph will be controlled by lactic acid dissociation equilibrium only so we write the lactic acid dissociation equilibrium reaction as you see here and then we can write the ka ka will be proton time lactate divided by lactic acid will be equal to 1.4 times 10 to the power of negative 4. So I will isolate proton concentration and then I sub for Ka and the concentration of acetic acid and lactic acid and lactate are given. We just sub it there and then we find proton concentration. Once we found the proton concentration, we can find the pH of the solution which will be 3.38. We can also, the second alternative method to find pH, we can use a method called henderson hasselbach equation, which using this formula, you can find pH. pH will be equal to pKa plus log concentration of A minus divided by concentration of HA, which is log of base divided by concentration of acid. So that's how we find the pH. Let's have another example. The pH of a buffered solution, buffered solution containing 0.25 molar ammonia, Kb is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 and 0.4 molar ammonium chloride. Calculate the pH of this solution. The major species in solution are ammonia, ammonium ion, chloride and water molecule. Ammonia plus water gives ammonium ion and hydroxide. Kb will be, we need to use Kb because we produce hydroxide. So it's basic reaction. So Kb will be equal to ammonium ion times hydroxide ion divided by ammonia. Then we can write the ice table. We can put the initial concentration of ammonia, which is 0.25, and initial concentration of ammonium ion, which is 0.4, and initial concentration of hydroxide is approximately zero. Then at equilibrium, we have 0.25 minus X. For ammonium ion, we have 0.4 plus X and X for hydroxide. We just sub it there. Then we approximate that 0.4 plus X. We approximate to 0.4 and same thing 0 0.4, 0 0.25. So using this method, we find X, which will be the concentration of hydroxide. So the concentration of hydroxide is 1.1 times 10 to the power of negative 5. And then we can find POH, which will be 4.95, and pH will be 14 minus 4.95, which will be 9.05. So this is going to be the pH of a buffer of that buffered solution. There is another method to solve it to find the pH. Again, we use this equation, Henderson equation, Henderson Hasselbach equation. pH will be equal to pKa plus log concentration of base divided by acid, which is 
0.25 plus log 0.25 divided by 0.4, which will be 9.05. Next example. Adding strong acid to a buffered solution. Calculate the pH of a solution that results when 0.1 mole gaseous HCl is added to 1 liter of the buffered solution from previous example. So we're adding 0.1 mole of gaseous HCl in 1 liter of the buffered solution. So the solution contains the following major species. We have ammonia, ammonium ion, chloride, proton, and water. Ammonia plus proton is going to be ammonium ion. We have the reaction. We find the number of moles. So concentration times volume is going to be number of moles. So before reaction, we have 0.25 ammonia, 0.1 proton, which is coming from complete dissociation of HCl, the acid, and it forms ammonium ion. So ammonium ion again concentration times volume it gives us 0.4 mole so then ammonia and proton react to each other and 0.25 minus 0.1 is going to be 0.15 and it cons proton concentration cons consumed so it becomes zero after reaction and ammonium ion is going to be 0.4 plus 0.1 which is going to be 0.5 so then after the reaction goes to completion the solution contains the major species ammonia ammonium ion chloride and water molecule so initial concentration of ammonia is 0.15 divided by 1 and initial concentration of ammonium ion will be 0.5 divided by 1 so 0.15 and 0.5 that will be approximately the concentration of base and the concentration of acid we just put it in the equation for henderson hasselbach is ph equal to pKa plus log ammonia divided by ammonium ion and the answer will be 8.73 now in this part I want to talk about buff buffering capacity the buffering capacity of a buffered solution represents the amount of protons or hydroxide ions the buffer can absorb without a significant change in pH a buffer with a large capacity contains large contain concentration of buffering components and so can absorb a relatively large amount of protons or a large amount of hydroxide ions and show just a little pH change. The pH of a buffered solution is determined by the ratio of A- divided by HA, the concentration of A- divided by the concentration of the acid. The capacity of the buffered solution is determined by this magnitude. Let's have an example. Adding strong acid to a buffered solution. Calculate the change in pH that occurs when 0.01 mole gaseous HCl is added to one liter of each of the following solution. So we have two different buffered solution. One is solution A, 5 molar acidic acid and 5 molar sodium acetate. In the second solution, we have 0.05, which is very dilute acetic acid, and 0.05 molar sodium acetate. Now, find out how much pH change. We will notice if we add 0.01 mole of gaseous HCl in one liter of this buffered solution. So both for both solutions, the initial pH can be determined by the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, which will be the same because the ratio of the ratio of them is going to be completely the same because the concentration of both the acid and salt in solution A and also in solution B are the same. It's going to be one. So pH will be equal to pKa plus log one, and log one is zero. So pH will be equal to pKa. And since they, we have the same acid for both of them, is going to be 4.74. So the pH of both solutions is going to be the same. After addition of HCl to each of these solutions, the major species before any reaction are acid, sodium ion, acetate, proton, chloride, and water. Which sodium and chloride doesn't affect the pH. So we need to consider proton 
acetate and acetic acid. For solution A, since the solution volume 1 liter, the number of moles equals to molarity. So before reaction and after reaction, we have 0.01 for acetate 5 and for acid is 5. And after they react, it's going to be 0 for proton, 4.99 for acetate and acetic acid is going to be 5.01. So we will just sub it there for solution number one. It's going to be 4.74 plus log 4.99 divided by 5.01. That will be approximately still 4.74. Why? Because it's going to be a very, very small number. So we can neglect it for solution B, which was the diluted one. We have proton concentration is 0.01, acetate is 0.05, and acetic acid is 0.05 as well. So when they react at the end, acetate concentration will be 0.04, acetic acid concentration will be 0.06, and pH can be calculated as 4.74 plus log 0.04 divided by 0.06, and at the end we have 4.56. So although we have the same acid because the second solution is much diluted you will notice much more pH change and buffered solutions shows less resistance to pH change so as you see here solution A the ratio in the beginning both of them are 1 and the new ratio will be 0.98 for solution A and solution B is going to be 49.5, which is huge. So a change for the first one is 1.12.98, the second one 102.49.5. So we have just 2% change for the first one and almost 50% change for the second one. So the pH of a buffered solution depends on the ratio of the concentration of buffering components. When this ratio is least affected by added protons or hydroxide ions, the solution is most resistant to change in pH. How to prepare a buffer? A chemist needs a solution buffered at pH 4.3 and can choose from the following acids. We have four different acids. Chloroacetic acid with the known Ka, propanoic acid, benzoic acid, and hypochlorous acid with different Ka values. Calculate the ratio of HA divided by A minus required for each system to yield a pH of 4.3, which system will work the best. So pH has to be 4.3. So proton concentration will be 5.10 to the power of negative 5. We just sub in the equation and depending on the Ka value, we can find out the ratio of HA divided by A minus. So what you see on the right hand side is the ratio of acid divided by the ion of the acid. We have different numbers depending on different Ka values. So that was it. It's it was related to buffered solution i hope you enjoyed this video if you found this video useful please like it you can also subscribe this channel to have access to many other videos regarding math science like chemistry physics have a great day and thank you for watching